Welcome to another fascinating episode of The Atheist Experience. I'm your host, Russell Glasser, and with me today is Jen Peoples. Um, last week, I uh, got invited to uh, a wedding with uh, my girlfriend's family and uh, had a great time. Uh, also had an interesting discussion with some relatives who don't agree with the, uh, with the purpose of the show. Um, <clears throat> about the show being offensive. Okay, so um, well, and what's offensive? What's offensive? Um, you know, I'm not going to talk directly about our conversation with them right, because right. I know that they're aware of the show and uh, I think right. that's rude. But I do want to sort of, uh, you know, discuss the general notion of, of how, it, how it's offensive to some people. Mm -hmm. um, I think my understanding from the conversation was basically that <clears throat> um, it's it's not right to di to directly go after people's religious beliefs and try to take away their faiths. And in some sense, I think that it's impossible to avoid being being offensive doing the kind of show we do because. People are naturally ready to take offense when their religion is right. is challenged in some way. Yeah. Um, so we don't want to be offensive on the show. Um, yeah, that's it's not our purpose. it's not our intent. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, we we don't we're not here to try to convert anybody. First of all, I mean, you right. know, we're not an evangelism show. I've talked in the past about atheist evangelism and how I kind of enjoy it. Uh, but what we're here for is two things. One is, uh, you know, promoting positive atheism and the separation of church and state, which uh, which is another way of saying outreach, trying to uh, you know bring more atheists uh, to. Sure. Ha to benefit from the social activities of the atheist community of Austin. And the other is, oh boy, people who talk about being offended at their religion being challenged do not hesitate in return to say the most horrible things right. about other religions and atheism, which is not a religion, but right. about uh, people's lack of religion. Um, Somebody quoted to me, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, yeah. which well, I'm used to because it's a giant freaking cliche. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's like, huh, you're telling me that you are uh, insulted by my discussing your religion in a critical way, but you are here telling me that I'm a fool to my face. Um, interesting. <laughs> Um, so, I don't know, ba basically all I want to say is, at some point you have to, uh, I mean, I think it's right and reasonable to have a discussion about people's conception of reality, because, I mean, you know, there's a long tradition of, uh, of philosophers who actually want to talk about that position, because, I mean, uh, you know, people have different opinions, and I think that hiding from each other's opinions and just not discussing it is not a good way to interact with each other. I mean, you know, I, I suppose one solution would be if everyone would agree to suddenly ha have the same opinion and all agree with each other, which I'm sure Christians would prefer. But, you know, that hasn't been happening in a couple... Uh, in you know, 10,000 years of, hu of recorded human history. And I don't see it happening now. So, I mean, I think that actually communicating about differences of opinion in the meantime is kind of, you know, a necessary stopgap. Do you, do you ever offend anybody? <laughs> I'm sure I do. Or, I, I think it's unavoidable. Yeah. I, I mean, unless you just sit down and say nothing. Right, which some people would also like. Well, yeah, and, and, and you know, I would say that for every person who emails us telling us how much we've offended them by 
you know, challenging them to support their beliefs through logic and reason, mm -hmm. we probably get 10 emails from um, atheists who say, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Right. We, you know, we I thought I was the only one. A lot of peop of email from people who are like embarrassed to, or, or I mean, you know, uncomfortable with the notion they don't believe in God. Uh, their their whole families are religious. Uh, most of the people they know are religious. And if and you know, people being social creatures want to sit down and discuss what they think. Yeah. Uh, and yet, people who are in that kind of situation, which you and I are not. Yeah. Uh, can get frustrated because they don't feel like they have an outlet. They don't have anyone to talk to about what they think. And so a lot of people find it very liberating when they when they realize, oh, there's there's people out here who are who not only think the way I think, but are willing to intellectually defend what I think. Right. Uh, and we I don't expect everyone who watches the show to agree with us all the time. I mean, people who mostly agree with us even, should not be expected to just take what we say here on the show and uh, and treat it as uh, gospel, so to speak. Um, yeah. But it feels good to me to have an opportunity to sit down and talk about this stuff and and invite the disagreement and invite the disagreement from other atheists as well as uh, theists who might be watching and just be offended at the notion that we're challenging them. Yeah. So. Well, and, and one of the things is, you know, I don't want to live in an echo chamber where the only views that I ever hear are things I already agree with. Um, I'd much rather um, have my views challenged from time to time and, and, and have to come up with a way of defending them right. on my own. And so I, I try to read something that I know I'm going to disagree with um, at least a couple of times a week because I think that, you know, it, sometimes I change my mind about things. I get new information, or I find an argument particularly compelling. But you know, if you live in an echo chamber and you don't expose yourself to um, other views, then you know you kind of get stagnant. And that's right. I mean, uh, Matt always liked to say, you know, uh, I would like to have as many true beliefs and as few false beliefs right. as possible. And I suppose one way to feel like you've arrived there is to just tune out everyone who disagrees with you. Yeah. And that way you can only talk to uh, people who reinforce what you already think. Uh, and then you can feel like, hey, I'm right about everything. <laughs> uh, but when it comes to being right and wrong, there are, in, in many cases, I mean, you know, there are matters of opinion, but there are also matters of fact where whether you're right, right or not depends on how well your belief actually sort of syncs up to the real world. Right. And if, uh, if you don't want to just be stuck with a rigid set of beliefs and not know when uh, the when the corresponding, uh, I, I mean, you know, when the corresponding fact may disagree with you, um, you know, that's fine for some people. But I think that the only way to to actually weed out the problems that you have with your beliefs is to uh, come up with people who disagree and see how reasonable they can be. Mm -hmm. And if you wind up changing your mind, I'd say that that's a good thing because it means that you probably realized you were wrong about something and therefore now you're probably right. Well, and, that, and this gets back to, uh, you know, we got an email not that long ago from a guy who said, hey, you know, um, it was something to the effect of, uh, don't, don't say you don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, yeah. said, I said, no, no, no. If you don't know, if you really don't know, then the answer is, I don't know. You know, and my view on this, and this is what I responded to him, was that I think that claiming that you know something when in fact you don't is a character flaw. Right. But in some religions, that's viewed as a sign of virtue. Yeah. You know, that, that you can claim knowledge that you cannot possibly have. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that kind of arrogant, unwarranted certainty yeah. that comes with saying you know things all the time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I try as hard as I can to know everything. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I like to read a little bit about all kinds of subjects. Uh, some of them are, are less boring to me than others. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I want to be at a point where I can offer an opinion that is informed by some kind of background reading from somebody who really knows what they're mm -hmm. talking about. Um, but there's a lot of stuff I don't know. There may, there's even a lot of stuff that, you know, scientists or the, the general body of, of smart people know about, but I just haven't brushed up on it enough. Yeah. And I think it's important to be honest about that. Well, yeah, and, and you know, we get um, emails sometimes from theists who ask us, well, you know, it, without God, you know, what's your purpose in life? And, I mean, one of the things that gets me up in the morning is the fact that I don't know everything. That there's always something new I can learn. And I think that's what makes life interesting, at mm -hmm. least for me. I mean, to have this um, unwarranted certainty about things because it's written in a book of Bronze Age myths, you know, to me, that makes life pretty boring. Right. And dark and scary and <laughs> all kinds of things. So. Well, I mean, you know, it is a kind of a dark and scary book in a lot of places. Oh, yeah.